All right, so we are super excited. Uh, Kelly and Yeri uh, and myself uh, have been working with Hackaday to formulate this particular workshop for weeks now. Um, we have given talks previously, but never really conducted a, a workshop and never definitely conducted a workshop virtually. So this is going to be a very interesting 2020 experiment. Um, before yeah. we start introducing ourselves, I'll just set the agenda for today. Uh, today we are going to, you know, introduce ourselves, who we are, what we do, uh, some of our, you know, background story. Uh, then we'll talk about tools, um, like what tools you will need today and what tools, you know, you uh, are optional. We'll talk about a little bit about uh, soldering techniques. And then we'll jump on to the actual uh, sculpture of the day, which is going to be a firefly. We'll be presenting three different ways uh, that you can you know, take on this project. Uh, with a simple uh, no circuit uh, template that Yuri will be presenting. Um, then Kelly will be presenting uh, her take on the firefly, which is, you know, has a, a stable uh, firefly. And then I'll finish up uh, with a simple triple five based uh, firefly. And then, you know, the after the first 30 minutes, we'll jump on to the actual workshop that will last 90. But remember this workshop, it's not a competition. It's not a uh, race to finish your sculpture. It's more about interacting with us, understanding what the techniques are um, and just, you know, having a good time. Um, so as far as introductions go, I'm Mohit. Uh, my last name, if you are unable to pronounce, it's Boite. Uh, I'm a senior hardware engineer at Particle. So my day job is literally building circuit boards, uh, which talk to the internet, uh, dev boards, um, uh, stuff like that. But in my free time, uh, I like to unwind by continuing to solder, but uh, not on PCBs, but using uh, brass as my primary medium. Um, so I have been building these sculptures for a few years now. Uh, my foray uh, into sculptures started with beam robotics uh, as a teenager. But I've taken on uh, like more challenging and interesting uh, projects as I moved along. I've uh, learned to incorporate wood, copper, brass uh, as my uh, to-go materials. I like to play uh, 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 like a toy maker at times by designing sculptures that have uh, personalities, um, you know, by using simple uh, seven segment displays are OLEDs. Um, They're very boxy, very square edged. I'm not comfortable doing uh, the organic looking sculptures that Yuri and Kelly are you know, experts in. So, uh, you know, being able to express emotions, you know, having just a thermometer, for example, this is a thermometer that instead of telling you what the temperature is, it's expressing, uh, you know, by changing its color, you know, showing emotions um, and stuff like that. Uh, my background is robotics, so I also like to use robotics and building sculptures you know this particular one was built uh, purely out of brass and preformed um, that allows me to paint with light you know if you take a long exposure photograph um, you can actually you know create patterns in thin air uh, in addition to doing sculptures i also love dabbling in uh, uh, cat design and 3d printing just the fact that we live in a world where you have access to 3d printers and pcb manufacturers you can literally, you know, build a product start to end, um, you know, sitting at your armchair here. So enough about me. Uh, let's see. Uh, we have Kelly and Yuri today. Uh, Kelly will introduce us first, uh, followed by Yuri, and then we'll uh, go on to the actual workshop. Kelly. Thanks. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Kelly Heaton, and uh, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, so just a little background on me. I am an artist and I make circuits because I'm fascinated by the lifelike qualities of electronic hardware. Um, and also that biological organisms are very machine-like. Um, so I'm going to start with an overview of my work in circuit sculpture so you have a sense for my background. And I also want to point out a couple of techniques that can inspire your own practice. So uh, my career in sculpting with hardware dates back to the late 90s when I uh, focused my graduate thesis on the creation of a digital artist palette and a system of reconfigurable what I call physical pixels. At that time, the field of artistic software was exploding and I really wanted to take part in it, but I didn't want to make graphics on a flat computer screen. Um, I wanted my electronic art, art to be sculptural, uh, hence physical pixels.
So from there, I moved on to sculpting with popular animatronic toys like Furby and Tickle Me Elmo. On the left is an image of a sculpture that I made with engineer Stephen Gray. It's called Pool. And it's got 400 reprogrammed Furbies embedded in the surface, and they uh, react to you, so they mirror your body in Furby. Um, and on the right is a giggling, quivering coat that I made from 64 used Tickle Me Elmos that I trapped on eBay. Um, if you want to learn more about either of these projects, you can check out my Reflection Loop from 2001 and Live Pelt from 2003. Um, before I move on, I just want to point out, if you look at the electronics inside of the Elmo coat, you can see that I use clear heat shrink tubing to hold everything together. Heat shrink tubing is a great material for circuit sculpture. So since that time, I've designed and built a lot of different circuits that blink lights, move around, and make sound, and I've mixed them with traditional media like drawings and paintings because I want to make visual art that feels like it's alive. Um, these are images from my show, The Parallel Series, from 2011. On the left is a pedagogical illustration of an analog motion detector, and on the right is a detail of a hybrid circuit painting called Resisto Ergo Sum in which I built my self-portrait in resistors and used blinking LEDs to look like synapses or thoughts circling my head. Um, the image on the right is a great example of the usefulness of what's called Thevenin's equivalent for making circuit sculpture. Uh, Thevenin's equivalent states that any combination of linear electronic devices, such as resistors connected in series and parallel, will function as a single device, in this case, like a single resistor. So with linear components, you can make something that looks very complex but is electrically simple. I've also made large as in human scale sculptures of electronic components. The image on the left is a detail of a giant resistor modeled after a honeybee. In the center is an NPN transistor lifting its emitter leg to become a diode. And on the right is uh, a, a five foot tall ceramic capacitor. If you wanna know more about why I made these giant electronic devices, you can check out my book, uh, Pollination from 2015. It's uh, on Amazon and Kindle format. So I sculpted numerous sound and light generating, generating insects because I love the way they look and sound when you have enough of them to make a landscape or a soundscape, for example, in the upper left-hand corner, I made a kinetic sculpture of electronic bees with tiny pager motors and mechanical springs. Um, the nice thing about metal springs is you can use them as part of your circuit and they're still bouncy and move elements in space. Um, also shown are two different approaches I've taken to making electronic moths. The white moth in the lower left corner is entri entirely electronic, built from printed circuit boards that are shaped like wings. Uh, and the yellow moth has a circuit board body but fabric wings. Um, both of these flutter LEDs using a shift register, and if you want to see video of that, you can check out my uh, Moth Electrolier sculpture from 2018. So I want to show you one additional approach to sculpting delicate things like insects and leaves, and that's to use flexible printed circuit boards. If you look at the image on the right, the orangey yellow color that you see on the moth wings is flexible PCB that I directly soldered through whole components to. Um, you can use surface mount parts, obviously, for a more delicate look, um, but I really like how through-hole components have a real, you know, an anatomical vine-like, um, they can almost use to depict like fields of energy you can sculpt in space, which is cool. Um, on the left, I used a flexible PC substrate as well uh, to make leaves that I later painted with transparent acrylic to change the color. And um, I etched all these flexible PCBs myself, uh, which is why I painted it. But you could also have a shop do this for you. And um, anyway, so yeah, all the um, PCBs that you see in this slide generate some combination of light and sound. And if you want to hear or see that, you can check out my Electro Lears and also my Hackaday project called Hacking Nature's Musicians. That's also from 2018. So more recently, I've started to sculpt analog electronic songbirds. This one is from 2019. If you're interested to hear my songbirds and learn how they work, you can check out a presentation I gave last week on deep fake bird song. Um, I love how electronic sculpture can create a distinctly biological aesthetic that suggests electronic devices do in fact have a life of their own. In early 2019, I made this sculptural bird for the Hackaday Circuit Sculpture Competition. 
And I uh, just wanted to point out the way I made the birds form, and that was to use uh, water-based clay. Uh, and then I wrapped resistors around it. What's great about that is it's super cheap and easy to just like make like a basic form and put your components around it. It won't burn. Um, obviously you do need to leave a seam somewhere so you can slip your sculpture off the clay before you finish. Um, but by that point it has enough um, structure to, to be stable on its own. And also noticed I used Thevenin's equivalent here too uh, because the, the entire big bird is one giant resistor from an electrical perspective. Um, there are a few more per parts that uh, make this like in the wire nest, make it chirp and sing a little bit like a baby bird, but uh, basically mostly just Thevenin's equivalent. So to wrap up here right now, I'm really into etching and screen printing circuit boards, which we won't be talking about today, but I just wanted to show you this so you have a sense for who I am. I love the print circuit medium if you want to talk to me about it. Um, and I continue to design new analog electronic circuits that have lifelike qualities. Um, I'm also working on a master controller for my different circuits so I can sequence them and make soundscapes. Um, anyway, just so you know, if you want to ask me about that. But anyway, for uh, that's it for now. I'll turn over the stage to Yuri. Hi, everybody. Uh, I would like to welcome you to this workshop as well. It's really exciting. Uh, I am Yuri Prowse, and I am a software engineer and a maker from Czech Republic. Uh, I made my first uh, sculpture two years ago, and I was inspired by Mohit Boyd work here. So thank you. Uh, and I totally fall in love with it. Uh, you know, it's not only a way to create uh, something unique and beautiful, but it's also pretty challenging because you need to have a wide spectrum of skills and techniques from metalworking, woodworking, hardware to uh, software engineering. And that's pretty fun. Uh, in the past two years, I've created about, around uh, 20 uh, different sculptures. And more importantly, I teach others how to make these on their own by writing and instructions and shooting the tutorials. I would describe my work uh, as an engineering art. As you can see, it's symmetrical, functional, clean, and a minimalistic design. Uh, I mainly work with LIDs and light effects and uh, various sensors to create some unique user experience. For example, the heart at the bottom reacts to your pulse, or uh, the LID ball on the left top uh, is controlled by the gyro. And each project for me uh, means a new challenge. I need to learn new technique, new material, new sensor, new hardware. That's what makes it fun for me. Uh, we live in wonderful age. Hardware is pretty cheap uh, and it's easy to obtain. Uh, you can create anything you can imagine. I always wanted to have, for example, uh, a Game Boy uh, that I owned when I was a kid. So I grab a development board and a display and created it the best way I know how. So with the brass and the brass wires, as you can see here, I also create the, uh, use the same technique on my uh, Arduino Uno clone, which is uh, through, which you can see that you can see through it. Um, and this was the first time I used uh, epoxy resin casting here. Again, super exciting and super fun. Uh, but so far, I would say my most famous and most complicated artwork is this ever-blooming flower. It combines electronics and mechanics. If you touch the leaf, uh, the petals will startly, uh, will slowly start to open. And I made this one for uh, my wife as a Valentine's Day gift, and it went viral. And since then, a lot of people asked me, uh, how to make a copy of it, or even if they can buy one. So I recently decided to found a company called Fluor, dedicated to handmade these flowers. So you can uh, go and check fluor.io and see how these are really beautiful. If I should describe the key difference between me, Mohit, and Kelly, 
I say it these intricate 3D templates I make for my sculpturing work, they help me to achieve a perfect symmetry, perfect shape. Uh, they are my third, fourth, and fifth hands while soldering. They are like perfect when you need uh, several uh, identical parts. For example, the same six leaves for uh, petals for for the flower itself. And last but not least, I make these LED jewelries, uh, which I originally designed for a workshop like this. Uh, they only have two components, LEDs and coin cell battery. So they are that simple to make. Anybody can make these even without knowing anything about electronics. I currently have uh, around 30 designs and all of these templates are available for download on my website. So make sure to check them out. And I would love to show you how to make these on this workshop. So this is me. Uh, there's definitely more I could talk about. So check out my Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube to find out more about my or about myself, about me uh, and my work. And of course, feel free to reach me. So thank you very much. And uh, let's start with the workshop itself, Moit. Thank you so much, Yuri. Um, it's amazing to see uh, that uh, the kind of styles visually and being able to bring that to this workshop. Um, I'll thank Hackaday once again uh, for you know pushing us to collaborate and come up with this workshop. Um, so hey, before before yes. we move on, should we let people ask us a few questions while we're here as presenters? We can answer them, or should we? What do people think? Absolutely. I think uh, people are asking questions. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. We'll take the first round of questions here. Um, the workshop will be available later. Um, the, all the links to this workshop, uh, in, including the web, uh, the presentation slide deck and the templates um, schematics, are all available on the Remoticons Circuit Sculpture uh, web page. So you can start downloading the whole presentation right now if you would like to. Uh, we will be sharing the links. Um, the links are all already on to the on the uh, Hackaday's web page. Empowering these with uh, LiPo batteries back here. Um, yes, you are all muted for the time being. Um, the jigs uh, what are... will happen? What, what will happen, you guys, is we're going to leave presentation mode after we go through the tutorials, and then you're going to pick a table, and we will move around between the tables, and then you can actually talk to us on video. Exactly. Awesome. Um, so, all right. We can keep taking uh, questions, because I think we'll cover the first 30 minutes with presentations. And uh, after that, we'll dive into the workshop, followed by you know us actually starting to build things. Uh, so before we get started, uh, today, basic things you will need and you know for your future projects is a soldering iron, solder, flux, uh, a pair of pliers, uh, flush or diagonal cutters. Today's skills only requires basic soldering skills. Um, you don't need to be an expert in you know, surface mount devices uh, or anything intricate. Uh, you can keep things simple. Basic understanding of electricity, electronics is uh, valuable, but not required. An immense amount of patience. Remember, if you're trying to do this uh, for the first time, it is going to take time. Uh, you have to be careful not to burn yourself. Um, you know, The battle scars are not something to be proud of when you're doing these things. Um, so. In terms of uh, what kind of soldering iron do you want, uh, I would say 50 watt or higher. Uh, that is something needed uh, when you're soldering brass or other heavy, heavier gauge metals uh, so that it has enough thermal mass uh, to keep the joints heated. Um, temperature control is always nice depending upon what you're using. Uh, highly su suggest use brass wool uh, to keep the tip clean in between joints. Um, the flux oxidizes uh, pretty fast and so you wanna make sure you know, you keep the uh, tip clean. In terms of solder itself, I personally like using leaded solder and I've just invested in a bunch of solder that I use, but only for my personal projects. Uh, at work, we tend to use lead-free. Uh, if you are choosing either, uh, make sure that it, it's water soluble, um, just makes your job of cleaning the joints easier later with just, you know, a toothbrush and water. In terms of flux, uh, you can use a flux paste or a flux uh, in a liquid form that can come from a like a squeegee bottle or a pen like this. 
if you are using a paste, make sure that you clean uh, the joints after this, because sometimes these fluxes will eat into your metal after you're done soldering. Uh, these two are my favorite tools that I use every day uh, for uh, my sculptures. Uh, it's made by a company named Zuron, uh, which is based out of the United States. Uh, they make really cool uh, pliers and diagonal cutters. My favorite thus far is the Zuron uh, 9100F that has a retainer clip. So after you clip something, uh, the leads don't go flying off. It is held within the, within the uh, cutter. I'll show you uh, later as we progress as to what that actually means. In terms of materials, I know we uh, talked about brass quite a bit today, and you know Kelly presented way using the actual electronic components themselves to create structures. Um, but brass is not the only thing. But let's start with brass. Uh, we suggested using 0.5 millimeter or 0.8 millimeter brass rods. Um, the reason is brass rods. If you buy a brass rod, it's pre-straightened, so you don't have to you know straighten them. Uh, if it's a wire, um, they come pre-packed. Uh, some of the vendors here in the state sides are K KNS Metals. They're based out of Chicago. Ace Hardware, you can buy them. And most hobby sh stores also carry them. Uh, be mindful if you were to go to Michael's and you buy a, like a jewelry brass, that it sometimes could be aluminum wire coated with brass. So you want to make sure that's uh, actually brass wire. We'd also learn how to convert a brass wire into a rod so that you don't always have to have a, a brass rod. But brass is not the only medium. Uh, recently, I discovered uh, that copper, uh, which I don't personally use, but I'm looking forward to using, can also be used uh, to create sculptures. Uh, it's softer, uh, slightly more malleable than brass. So it's a little difficult to work with. But as you can see here, I'm using the example of Tano here, uh, who makes beautiful uh, sculptures using copper as their primary uh, medium. Um, if copper is not available, you can use music wire or tin plated steel. Uh, you can use brazing rods or silver coated steel um, and stuff like that. You cannot use aluminum, uh, stainless steel or metals like those uh, for soldering. So if you stick to these uh, and the gauges usually between 18 to 20 are the right, um, uh, right gauge to do this uh, sculptures. Here's an example of Eric uh, who makes beautiful um, sound sculptures. Um, I just like to see how the material you choose actually you know makes your sculpture uh, look like in the end so there there is no hard and fast rule that you have to use brass today or you know whatever um you, you use any material that is available to you let's see how does one work with brass again this brass i'm using it as an example because that's my primary medium but that doesn't mean you have to use it the techniques that we will talk today uh, also apply to other materials um, including copper um, and tin plated or silver plated uh, rods. Uh, it's almost therapeutic uh, when you hold a piece of brass rod or brass wire and start bending and cutting it. You know, it's again, this is not a uh, the competition. Uh, the idea is, you know, you have a nice little afternoon break here, and you know, you know, you cut this brass wire, shape it. It's almost uh, meditative to be able to do this. Um, so take your time, uh, work with the material. Every material will have its own personality. Um, they'll, some, some will be resistive, uh, some won't be. And so work with the material you have, understand it. Um, the way, uh, this is my personal uh, approach to forming shapes is basically I mark the brass rods with a graphite pencil. Uh, the reason why I use graphite pencil is it doesn't mark the brass and you can rub it off with your fingertips. If you were using a Sharpie, you can use you know, acetone or uh, other solvents to clean it, but a pencil works just great. Um, so first step, you know, you mark using a paper template. This can be printed or hand-drawn, or you can use something else like a clay um, or a measuring tape to measure it. Second step, you know, you basically cut it. And this is where the, uh, the diagonal cutters shine because most of you know after this step, what's going to happen? The other end is going to go shoot off and strike your eye or somebody else's eye. But uh, not with these uh, retainer clips. They will stay with you. So extremely valuable uh, to invest in the right tools, um, especially if you have kids, pets, or other uh, things that you need to protect. Um, one minor detail here is every cut is uh, different. So you'll have one side is flush. The other side is like, like cut in a wedge. 
So depending on what intricate shapes are you forming, this may or may not be important. Um, next step is bending. Uh, again, very therapeutic. Try to use a flat and uh, needle nose plier. If you're using serrated ones, they will uh, mark your brass rods and you know uh, it, the results won't be as uh, clean. So a flat nose needle plier would be the way to go. And then as you work with the materials, like I have gotten good at bending things at right, you know, just like a 90 degree angle, just because you just visually know the amount of pressure you apply is, you know, what kind of angle it's going to create. Uh, be patient, go back and forth. These materials are very forgiving in terms of how you bend them and form angles. Um, next up is soldering. How do you solder this? Uh, if you know how to solder like electronics, this should be just as uh, uh, straightforward. Um, I usually like to put masking tapes to hold the things together. Um, Yuri and Kelly will talk about their methods of you know holding materials down on a template. But the key element here is after you you have put these down, make sure that these don't have any stresses. So don't bend them against their will because as soon as you solder it and take out the masking tape, it's going to be deformed. Um, so you know. Make sure that your hands are relaxed as well as the materials that you're working with are also in a relaxed uh, state. Apply a dab of flux. This is critical for a clean um, and proper joint. Uh, I remember in the past, I ended up making a lot of cold solder joints because I was using uh, the right flux or the right temperature. Uh, but using the flux will you know, be the most important thing you will do while making sculptures. Next step. Solder. Uh, again, soldering is pretty straightforward. I keep my uh, soldering iron around 700 degrees. Uh, you can work depending upon the gauge of the brass and the material you're using. You might want to adjust that temperature. Once you form this solder joint, you'll see there is a little bit of discoloration that happens from applying heat. Um, and this, this, this is uh, a common problem, but has a very easy solution. All you do is use a fine uh, grade steel wool and just you know brush it off and it will result in a very clean matte uh, looking solder try doing this with every solder joint if the area is accessible you don't want to be uh, applying the wool after the sculpture is done you can at this point also try to wash it off um, if you want to uh, before uh, i I mentioned that you know you can use wires uh, as sculptures elements, and if you want to straighten them, there's a very easy, straightforward technique to do that is by using a uh, drill chuck. This uh, normal hand drill uh, will work great. All you do is take your uh, brass wire, usually around 18 to 20 gauge, half hard, or you can use copper. Um, make a small loop at the end, feed it into the drill chuck, and hold the other end uh, with pliers and just you know, apply the twist. You'll notice that after about, you know, uh, I usually count to 10 seconds uh, after that time period has passed, the twisting action actually straightens the wire into a straight rod. And at this point, you know, you can start using this in your sculptures, rebend them, reshape them uh, in the ways you want. Um, so for today's sculpture, uh, we're super excited that we'll be uh, making something that was inspired by nature, uh, which is a firefly. And there are so many possibilities uh, to go about this. But we'll be presenting a few options for you to give it a try uh, with and without electronic circuits uh, with or without templates. Um, you can take this far in, you know, you can have your own version of it. There's no way, right or wrong way to do this. And to help us uh, through our first version of this firefly um, i'll let yuri uh, present uh, the next section of this tutorial where he'll be talking about how to make beautiful fireflies out of leds and coin cells you're muted I, yuri, I, yeah, I forget my turn my mic on so yeah. i will share my screen in a minute so you can jump on it jump on it uh and here we go. So just confirm that you can see my presentation here.
Mohit, can you confirm that you can see my presentation? Just yes, it's yep, full screen. Okay, perfect. So, uh, as Mohit introduced it, uh, we are going to make a nature-inspired sculpture, uh, a firefly, and I would like to uh, introduce my technique, how I uh, create it, as you can see on the right image. Uh, don't start soldering right now. Uh, we will be here. And this tutorial is available on the Hegday page, so you can download it later. And we will answer questions and help you with it if you decide to go uh, with this approach. OK, so moving on. Uh, I always, or not always, but usually I start uh, on a computer. I sketch a raw shape to determine the dimensions uh, of my art piece. I went through uh, several iterations here. So this is uh, the final result. This is the final template. Uh, the Firefly actually was a huge change for me because I'm more into abstract shapes and uh, abstract shapes than animals. So it was quite a challenge. Uh, as you can see, you can clearly recognize my style symmetrical. Uh, clean and <laughs> minimalistic designs and straight lines. <laughs> yeah, I'm an engineer. So uh, then when I have the template ready, I print it on a paper and uh, I can start uh, to actually making uh, the sculpture. The real magic here is in using a double-sided tape. Uh, I put it on the sculpture itself over over uh, the lines. So uh, the double-sided tape will be my second and uh, third and fourth and fifth hand while soldering uh, the piece together. If you don't have double-sided tape, you can use a normal tape and tape over the wire instead of putting the wire on the top of the of the tape. But using double-sided tape is like pretty amazing and really quick and comfortable. So this is how, how the template looks when, when the tape is applied and it's fully covered uh, with the double-sided tape. So now it's time to move to actually start bending and working with wire. Uh, you need to take your, ta your time here. Uh, don't be quick about it. Play with it, as Mohit said, it's uh, really a fun to work with wire to create a shape out of it. For example, here I started with a head, so I bent the wire with, uh, with the round pliers to make a, a perfect radius for, for, the, for the head of the firefly. Then I cut it uh, to the exact size and put it on the template. If you now hold the template in your hand, um, if, if you have left the, the paper, uh, the wire will not uh, fl fly away. So that's why I'm using the double-sided tape. And now I start really slow to create the other parts of, of the sculpture. So I start with the left wing. I measure the bend on the wire. I bend the wire to precise angle, double check it with the template, and then cut it with the pliers, with the cutters, uh, sorry. Uh, as you can see, I didn't continue the bend here uh, to the bottom side of the wing because uh, bends over 90 degrees are hard to make and then they doesn't look nice. They have, instead of uh, sharp, uh, edge, they have the round edge, which I don't like that much. So I rather uh, cut the wire here and continue with another one. Uh, it have a drawback because you will have a joint in there. And I more like when they are bent. So, you know, you need to, uh, to make a compromise somewhere. Uh, okay, so now I start, start filling the template. The left wing and now the right wing. So it's pretty easy just cutting, just measuring and cutting the wire. Uh, 
sometimes you don't uh, cut the wire to uh, the correct size at the first time so you throw it away and start with another one you know don't don't be quick about it take your time so this is the basic shape of my firefly pretty easy right <laughs> okay so now comes the hard part and it's actually making it an electronic circuit uh, i'm fancy using smd components uh, i'm using the biggest one which are uh, 1206 smd lids they come in various um, colors you can even get blinking lids and fading lids so they make really nice light effects uh, if you are not comfortable with the smd component you can use two holes like this as well there's no difference at all just the size uh, basics to the electronic of the leds i hope you are all familiar with the basics of the electronic circuit the current needs to flow in order to circuit to work uh, in this case uh, to light the LED. Uh, LED have two leads, the positive lead, which is called anode, and the negative lead, which is called cathode. And uh, as you can see on the SMD LED on the bottom, there is this little arrow that shows how the current flows. So the negative lead uh, is where the arrow is pointing. So this is like critical. You need to know where is the positive and negative lead. Otherwise, the LID will not work. So I take my tweezers and place LIDs upside down on the template. Why I put it them upside down? Because SMD LIDs have the pads on the bottom. So in order to make a solid joint, you need to solder them upside down. That's how it is. Uh, as you can see, I'm using negative lead, negative uh, lead of the LED. Uh, negative lead is connecting to the outline of, of the Firefly. So I choose that the outline of the Firefly will be a negative uh, wire of the sculpture. As you can see, detail here. Uh, so now, I can, this, the fun can start finally. I will solder all the joints together. I first apply the flux to all the joints and then start slowly soldering individual joints. Uh, the double-sided tape has a little drawback. Uh, if you overheat uh, your wire, uh, the glue on the double-sided tape will stop being sticky and the, the wire will, will get loose. So make sure not to overheat your piece. Uh, it's also good to not overheat it because uh, then the joint will not look nice and uh, the wire will start to change color. So this is how the joint should look like. Nice, uh, evenly flat, no, no, no blobs at all. If you apply enough flux and not, not too much heat, this is how it will look like. So this is the final uh, shape of the Firefly. And now for the final step is to powering it. As I said previously, uh, this is the dead simple circuit. It only contains two components, uh, the coin battery cell and LEDs. You might wondering why there is no resistor at all. And it's a little nasty trick. The, uh, this, kind of, uh, this kind of coin battery has its own internal resistance, so it won't allow uh, too much current through the circuit on its own, so the LIDs are safe in this circuit. It's a nasty trick, but it works and it makes it really simple. Okay, uh, you now need to make sure the battery will hold in place, and this is our positive wire, so connecting to the other side of the LIDs. Uh, this is the first 3D band, the most complicated band uh, in my sculpture. Uh, in order to 
to make sure the battery will hold uh, enough in the sculpture, I need to also uh, solder the wire on the front of the Firefly. But, you know, if, you, if I solder the wire directly to the outline, the circuit will shortcut. So I needed to add another two LEDs on the front. So this is how the final sculpture looks like. As you can see, there is a positive wire connecting all the positive leads of the LEDs and negative wire connecting all the negative, uh, negative leads of the LED. So the circuit should probably work. We will see. Yay, it works. It's, this is like the perfect moment when you see it finally work. It finally uh, shines. Okay, so now it's time to be creative because you exhausted uh, all the possibilities of, of the paper template. So for example, I started to work out of the template uh, and this is the most fun. I started uh, to adding legs and other things to the sculpture so it looks more natural, not just the flat design. Uh, I usually, at the end, clean it with the alcohol. Uh, I'm using uh, API, uh, so it makes uh, it makes it gets you rid of the flux. Uh, and also, I'm using this ultrasonic cleaner. It nicely polishes uh, the brass wire at the end. So this is the final sculpture. I also added uh, the small. Uh, brass plates at the end to make the wing cases so it looks more like a firefly. Okay. So I hope. Can you uh, explain to people how you got the eyes at an angle? Okay, so you mean this slide, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. So you, I, I just, I took a pliers and took uh, tweezers, sorry, tweezers. I took tweezers and LID and take my time and trying to get the LIDs into the right position. So there was no template for it. Uh, you can use a little piece of wood or any material to help you hold, hold the LID in the correct position. But I just used tweezers in this case because it was a simple solution. Uh, I made uh, I made it for I, it took several it took me several iterations because I don't get the angle and I, I don't get the angle right at uh, the first several times. So again, you need to be patient you need to be um, uh, sorry what's the word? Uh, never mind, you need to take your time to 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 make it right. So I will I will uh, help you through the workshop, if you will. Okay. So this is for my paper template technique. As you can see, the result is quite nice, and I'm sure you will be able to create a similar design. The template is available on the Hackaday page as well as the presentation itself. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Yuri. That is beautiful. Um, I just love how like alive that particular thing looks, and especially the six LEDs that you use in the uh, back are like, probably anatomically correct as well. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> now that you have seen uh, Yuri's way of building things, um, you know it's his own style, his own uh, Way of making sculptures that have you know come to admire over the years. There is another way you can go about this, and I think um, in the community we call it uh, free farm soldering. Um, and Kelly, I feel like, is the master in that, where she's able to use organic shapes and arms to create these beautiful uh, circuit elements. Um, she has requested me to uh, present for her uh, while she will, uh, you know, while she has a poor internet connection. So I will present her slides, and she will take it away. Thanks, Mohit. Uh, Yuri, check out the chat. I tried to answer everybody's questions for you, but uh, that would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, before, before you start presentation, yeah. if you 
I think the better format for the question is a Q&A section on the right, because your comment won't get lost in the chat as it flows away. So if you think you have something important to ask, just put it in the Q&A section. Go ahead, Kelly. Thank okay, you. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, so uh, the, the point of us providing you with different approaches actually is that when you do get to the workshop stage, you can mix and match all of this and we, you know, we really want you to feel like you can try different techniques. So you don't have to just make Yuri's Firefly or just make mine or just make Mohit's. It, it's, it, it doesn't matter. We're just trying to show you some different strategies. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to be talking through is, is how to make one of these little guys. And just like what Yuri did, there's really, you don't need to know anything about electronics to do this um, because you're not building a, well, you are building a functional circuit, but in a very basic way. So I'll show show you before I get started. This is this is the Firefly illuminated here with my light. It's kind of hard to see that, but anyway. Um, and what I'm going to point out to you at the end, which is an option, uh, we also uploaded this to the project page. But if you separately breadboard, this is an oscillator. It's an A-stable multi-vibrator circuit, and the schematics are all for uh, there for you guys um, who want to do this. Either either freeform or in your breadboard, which I can't. I need my reading glasses. There we go. <laughs> anyway, if you build an oscillator, then your firefly will blank. Uh, and for those of you who want to get you know really advanced, I can work you through making a firefly where actually the entire oscillator is in the firefly. But that's not what I'm going to teach you through this tutorial. So, next slide. All right, so first of all, find yourself one LED that looks Firefly-like, and I think it's helpful to refer back to those pictures or Google Firefly just to get a sense of color, you know, like browns and yellows and oranges work really well. And then you want to find an LED. I think yellow is great, but it could be any color. And um, if possible, you know, just think about the proportions of the LED and the resistor, because the more you have the proportions accurate, the more it's gonna look realistic. Next slide. <laughs> just FYI, it's very helpful to have a box somewhere full of a bunch of random electronic components that can be really useful for uh, circuit sculpture because um, if, for example, like, so getting back to the LED resistor combo, um, so I use 12 volts, maybe you're using five or three volts, it really doesn't matter. You adjust your resistor value accordingly, uh, but just to give you kind of a hand-waving range, you want your resistor value to be somewhere between, let's say, 100 ohms and 10K. I mean, it, don't stress about it. If you happen to have resistors that are like, all really huge, then um, put them in parallel to reduce their resistance. If you happen to have resistors that are all like one ohm, <laughs> um, that would be pretty small, but link them together in series and, and get what you need. So move along. Um, you don't need to have this, but I'm gonna show you how to use it. You could also use double-sided tape, or you could use a, a bench vise, what, or you know, whatever it is that you have on hand. Um, but modeling clay, so like that you can just get at any art supply store, um, water-based, makes a great quick and dirty jig. So make sure you know which side of your LED is the anode and which side is the cathode. Um, again, Google it if you're concerned. The reason why this is important is that um, the negative or the battery needs to be plugged into ground and the anode or positive side of the battery is gonna be connected to power. One or the other side is going to be connected to the resistor. Doesn't matter which side, but you need to make sure that you respect the polarity of the LED. So move on. So here's how I use clay as a jig. Just like put a blob on, a, on your bench and stick your resistor into it. Next slide. 
And then you can use another blob and stick your uh, LED into it. And what I love about it is one of the hard things with jigs is um, sometimes you'll get your jig set up, but then your components are just not quite lined up and it's really fiddly and irritating. But with clay, you can just smush it. And then once you take your components out, next slide. Um, if there's any residue of clay, you can just wipe it off with your finger or, or use like a slightly damp piece of paper towel. Anyway, so um, at this point, uh, what you've got now is a resistor connected with a very short lead to one side of your LED because you can see how we're making like the, the body and the tail of the firefly. Next slide. All right, so now take yourself a piece of long wire. Always, longer is always better because you can always cut it later. I used black, uh, brown, you know, it doesn't really matter the color, but I think black's nice because of the color of the firefly wings. And make two figure eights with your wire. And make sure you've got uh, some length on the end. So next slide. All right, and now you want to find the middle point of that figure eight. And uh, taking one of them, next slide. You're gonna strip that whole length. And remember, keep, keep some extra wire on that end. Next slide. So just to show you kind of where you are right now, right? You've got two figure eights, one of them is stripped to that middle point. Next slide. All right, so wrap it around to make yourself one set of wings at the bottom. Next slide. And then remove your insulation just a little bit in the middle of the wire that still has the insulation on it. Next slide. That way you can wrap the whole thing. So now you basically have created like the top of the wings on a firefly uh, where they're black, and then you've got your your more like lightweight papery wings of the actual firefly. And I just want to point out, this is also like if you wanted to do this, but then add extra detail into your wings, you could totally do that because now you've got the the wire form on the outside, like what Yuri just showed you, and you could tape it down, you know, and bend the wire of the black at the top and give yourself some detail inside of those wings. Next slide. So solder it in the middle so it's secure. Now take your resistor LED pair and wrap your extra wire around it to attach your wings in the front. And then if you take that extra wire that you have left over from your wing loop and loop it back around and solder it to the resistor lead, next slide. You can then cut that loop and you've just given yourself your front legs. So move, next slide. And then with the leftover uh, LED lead, if you use a pair of needle nose pliers, you can coil it up to make like eyes or face, however you wanna do that. You could, you know, for another instinct, you could make another loop and cut that so it has antenna. Next slide. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to, um, the, so the yellow wire I'm using here, I, I should have said this before, the black wire in the wings and the part that we stripped, that is gonna go to ground. So uh, I always ever use black or brown or a dark color to indicate, indicate my ground lead so I don't get confused. And so here I've picked yellow for my second wire that we're gonna take to power. Um, it could be orange. I mean, it could be red. It could be whatever. I think yellow looks like a firefly trail, though. So strip part of that. And now take that lead and give yourself plenty of extra and lay it right up at the top of the, of the other side of the LED. Don't touch the side that's connected to ground. Next slide. Okay, so you've soldered it right up there at the top. Your, your two leads are not touching. And now you want to bend that. So then next slide, um, you're going to cut that lead to make a leg. Next slide. Okay. Um, and so this is kind of a nice to have. But what I did here was because that black wire that was coming off is just, you know, the black is sort of visually heavy. 
Um, I'm going to strip the insulation off. Next slide. Um, and same thing on my on my power side. I didn't strip off the yellow because I thought it'd be really cool to just gently break the insulation and scooch it apart to make you know like a, it almost looks like a blinking trail. Next slide. And so at this point, this you know you you've got your firefly, you've got your ground lead, you've got your power lead. So if you plug this in, it will light up, but it will not blink. So, as I mentioned, if you want to, if you have a breadboard and you feel comfortable breadboarding uh, some form of oscillator, this is an A-stable multivibrator. Uh, Mohit's going to show you how to build a, a, a an oscillator using a 555 timer. I mean, there's numerous ways to do this, but um, anyway, this is one. Next slide. Um, and there you go. So, like I showed you before, here's my... Here's, here's the Firefly I just described, and it's plugged into my, my breadboarded oscillator here. So I think for those of you that want to get your feet wet making something analog electronic, this is a good time to do it. I'm happy to help talk you through it. Oh, there's one more slide, but I've already mentioned this. Well, actually, a couple more. So if you wanted to add detail to your wings, and again, you can use your, your jigs for that. Um, so you can see there where I've added some more detail to the wings and laying out my components because, you know, if you want to get really advanced and put your A-stable multivibrator actually in the body of the Firefly. Next slide. Um, so yeah, I, if you look at my Instagram, I've got video of this guy. Actually, I've got him right here. I can just plug it in for you and then we're going to move on so Mohit can talk to you about, uh, how to build something with the 555 timer. But um, anyway, I'll show you that later because I don't want to hold us up. But um, yeah, I look forward to helping you guys out. Thank you so much, Kelly. Um, that is such a wonderful way to just use a simple piece of wire and just you know bend it uh, in a very organic and uh, uh, beautiful shape. I've always uh, struggled with organic shapes, you know, curves. Um, just being a you know engineer who designs circuit boards, I, I see everything in straight lines and forty five degrees. But I think Kelly has pushed me to try and see, like you know, working with organic shapes is not that difficult. Um, so I challenge myself uh, based on what Kelly uh, showed. How do you use electronic components so that they become the body uh, of the sculpture in a way where it's like almost anatomically correct? Um, so I went ahead and designed my version uh, of a Firefly that uses a simple triple uh, five A stable uh, in an A stable mode where it blinks an LED. Um, over here, you see the resistors that are on the wings are basically resistors in parallel. Um, so the compute out to one single resistance. Um, both the schematic and the template are on the Hackaday's Remoticon Circuit Sculpture uh, webpage, so you can easily download these. I won't go into the details of actually making this because I think we have had enough good groundwork uh, for us to understand how one would go about uh, building one of these. Now, I initially started by building a, uh, a smaller, quick prototype on the right and then made a little bit elaborate uh, version of it. Uh, the two capacitors on the front that you see are just basic optional bypass capacitors that also act uh, like eyes. Um, the capacitor adds timing and then, then the LED at the back. So please feel free to take an own, uh, take at this like own version and you know improvise as the time allows. You don't have to finish the sculpture, sculpture today, uh, but this basically gives you an idea as to what the process looks like. Uh, here's the underbelly uh, of these two sculptures. You know, using I'm using 0.4 millimeter brass uh, wire, but you don't have to use brass. You can use anything that is available at hand. And here's the sculpture in action. Uh, I used Eagle uh, Autodesk Eagle uh, schematic capture to design the schematic as well as lay out the template. So you, you know you can easily uh, take a printout uh, and use that as a template uh, as 
Yuri had previously taught us, um, just using that as a reference. But please feel free to improvise um, and you know start building a sculpture. So at this point, we will uh, stop presenting and uh, open the floor for folks to you know collaborate at tables. This is more of a an experiment where we will go around the tables, talk to folks, see if they have any questions, concerns, um, and you know have more one-on-one -on -one time. Uh, so with that, uh, I look forward to chatting you virtually uh, on this uh, remote platform. Thank you, everyone. See you at the tables. Thank you.